Hello everyone, uh, welcome to our next uh, professional development session here and we're going to focus on kind of an interesting topic. Uh, we're going to do uh, critical thinking in the classroom and I always feel that uh, critical thinking doesn't get enough uh, uh, doesn't get enough thought in uh, education. So uh, let's get let's get right into this here. I'm going to hit present so we can make this full screen. And uh, here we go, right? So this is a teacher's guide. So uh, it's a topic is critical thinking, but this is so that uh, educators get an un get a, a full understanding of what critical thinking is, and they can sort of apply that in the classroom and pass that on to their students, right? Because that's always the goal. So uh, real quick here, this is a uh, here's a video I put together. I'm not going to play this. This is a, a short video. I think it's about three about maybe three or four minutes on critical thinking. But uh, this presentation is going to go in. This is an in depth. A presentation on critical thinking. So this is just like a short, uh, little short video here. So I'll provide a link to this in the description if you want to watch it. All right. So let's uh, take a let's start with an introduction here. Now the ability to critical think, to critically think, will enable learners to analyze information and make reasonable judgments. All right. So as we go through this uh, critical thinking uh, presentation, you'll you'll see that we talk a lot about misinformation and disinformation, and it's really being able to, you know, uh, sort through it and sort of wade through all all the the falsehoods and things like that, and and uh, and uh, opinion and and find out uh, uh, you know what's uh, what's accurate information. So uh, one of the main purposes of education is to foster critical thinking in the students. Okay. When students graduate, uh, you know, in twelfth grade, uh, when they graduate high school, and even and especially college, you know, uh, college was really uh, first created so that so that uh, uh, bright minds can discuss and argue and, and present different sorts of information and critically think and, and things like that. But you know, that doesn't mean it just has to be college. It could also be in, in uh, high school as well. So. You know, uh, great teachers are the ones that, that, that are able to teach their, their students life skills such as critical thinking. So now, as students progress um, up academic grade levels, their ability to critically think should further develop. So, you know, you should be able, students should be able to, to you know, critically think uh, more and more as, as, they, as they get older. And, and it should be because us as educators, we've been uh, helping them and uh, fostering their ability to critical think. So here's an introduction and some of some of the uh, uh, some of the topics we'll cover education. So you know, critical thinking uh, you know is used to analyze information and make reasonable judgments. Okay, analyze information and make reasonable judgments. And we're going to talk about these uh, little topics here. It has multiple uses: education, reasoning. So uh, there are many uses for critical thinking. Uh, functions of critical thinking include career and job skills, self-reflection, something that. Uh, is beneficial, you know, in all facets of life, economic understanding, independent learning, and more. Now, epistemic beliefs play an important role in critical thinking. When students believe in their abilities, they fare much better than those who do not believe, right? So if they have an epistemic belief that they're going to be successful and that they can credit critically think, they do much better, Um Critical thinking is ultimately about deduction, reasoning, and logic. Deductive reasoning challenges the mind and keeps it fit. Okay, the brain is a muscle. Okay, got to work that muscle out. This is similar to the way uh, going to the gym can keep the body fit, right? Deductive reasoning, and um, previously we mentioned epistemic beliefs. Okay, you have to believe that, uh, you have to believe in your abilities to critically think. And then you'll start challenging yourself a little bit more. Okay, some definitions of critical thinking. So how do you define critical thinking? Uh, well, critical thinking has been divine, defined in a number of different ways throughout the years. Still, um, there are some commonalities among various definitions. Uh, one commonality among the definitions is the ability to evaluate information is a defining factor. Okay, and I mentioned that earlier. You have to evaluate information for its validity. Um, there's a lot of fake news out there. So that is a key, uh, a key component of the, the definition. And critical thinking learners are defined as being able to make judgments on the credibility of information. Okay, rational people are described as critical thinkers, as well as being open-minded and informed by evidence. 
Okay, these are rational people. Rational people, critical thinkers, and go hand in hand. Some researchers, some researchers define critical thinking as a skill. This skill is seen as an umbrella term. So the skill of critical thinking, when, uh, when they use it as a skill, sort of includes analyzing, applying, conceptualizing information. Think Bloom's taxonomy, uh, Webb's depth of knowledge. Okay, definitions here. Um, we're gonna, critical thinking has been defined in many different ways. So as we said, evaluate. Uh, this is one that we mentioned, uh, be able to evaluate information. Um, it's a rational person. It's defined as a skill and uh, self-regulatory. So critical thinkers are the type of learners that are able to self-regulate. These learners, these are the learners that are able to control their own thought process and their emotions in times of stress. Controlling your emotions is very difficult. Um, you know, there's something called um, in, emotional intelligence. I'd like to do a presentation on that uh, down the line. Um, becoming too emotional at times may cloud your judgment and lead to irrational decision making. I, most of the time when I make really bad decisions, it's because of my emotions. Uh, I can't get a hold of my emotions either. I get very angry or very happy, euphoric. Uh, it, it's uh, It's tough. Now, um, the importance. Okay. Uh, what's the importance of critical thinking? Can, uh, here, here are a couple topics, right? Career success, solving problems, making better decisions, uh, bringing awareness. So why is critical thinking so important to life, right? So one of the main reasons it's important is that it breeds a self-awareness, okay? Individuals that are self-aware are able to recognize their own biases and their own assumptions, and they become better for that, Critical thinking is actually a technique used to make better decisions. It's hard to recognize your own uh, biases and assumptions. Uh, it's not something easy to admit. Um, but you do, you know, uh, you will become better for that. And again, that's a, that's a component of, of critical thinking. Not many people, you know, want to, when you think criti critical thinking, not many people want to look at themselves as being the problem. Uh, but uh, in life, right, it's most of the times we're the, we're the cause for our, our own uh, misery. Okay, critical thinking is used in a methodical way to solve problems. Being able to use strategic methods to solve problems is one of the most valuable components of acquiring this is a disability. So, being able to effectively solve problems is needed in any and all walks of life, whether it be raising children, completing daily tasks, or running a business. You have to solve problems. Uh, learners that have mastered the ability to critically think are more likely to have career success as well. So let's look at some forms of critical thinking, right? So we're going to look at, uh, well, critical thinking may take on three different forms. And, and we'll break it down into verbal reasoning, probabilis probabilistic reasoning, and scientific reasoning. Critical thinking may take on three different forms, as I just mentioned, verbal, probabilistic, and scientific. And verbal reasoning can be described as the ability to detect persuasive or manipulative techniques found in oral and written language. That's a good one too. Um, you know, you watch a commercial and, you know, somebody's trying to persuade you. Somebody's trying to sell you something. You talk to somebody in the street and maybe they're friendly and then oh, in a short time, you know, they're trying to manipulate you. You have to, uh, you know, have to be on the lookout, lookout for it. And, you know, there's, you know, maybe us, you know, uh, one of us uh, is, a, is a skilled uh, at persuasion and things like that. And when you do have those skills, you, you have to be very, you need some ethics there, not to use it in the wrong way. But uh, verbal reasoning, as, as I mentioned, right, is, is the ability to detect uh, persuasive and, and manipulative techniques. You know, I, I think of a friend of mine, he'll call me up and, uh, you know, I'm always waiting for him. And he's always, you know, want something at the end, want something at the end. You have to be able to, uh, you, you know, you, you have to be able to see it coming and, and know know what it is. Probabilistic reasoning. Okay. Knowing that, so you look here on the side and, and there's a two, 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 there's a pair of dice, right? So knowing that there's a one in six chance of rolling a four using a single die, Okay. You should have an idea about numbers. Also knowing that hitting the Mega Millions jackpot lottery is near impossible. So at work, you know, they always, uh, 
I don't know, let's say six, seven times a year, there'll be the mega jackpot or something like this, and they'll go around and they'll, you know, collect the money and say, hey, are you in? And they'll have the big, Frank, Frank, you're in on the mega millions. And, and, you know, most of the time I go along because of FOMO. FOMO is fear of missing out on, on the millions. But uh, the, the truth is I probably lost, you know, I, I, let's say it's $2 to get in. You know, we get a bunch of tickets at work, and uh, I've done this for, let's say, seven years. I don't know, let's say let's say five times a year. It's like I lost 50 bucks right there um, because it's near impossible. Now, I say near, but you better – and when you use the word near, people think, oh, well, there's still a chance. No, it's basically impossible. Um, you know, you have to visualize. Uh, for example, the, the chance of, of hitting the Mega Millions is if you take a block in, let's say, Manhattan, and, and you took all the buildings and you filled them up with little um, ping pong balls, and the, the winning lottery ticket is like the one red – red ping pong ball out of all the houses and all the apartment buildings in one block um you know like a square block you know what would be the odds that you find it it's it's near impossible so you have to be able to sort of visualize too um scientific reasoning uh, being able to judge <coughs> how valuable and reliable data is in relation to an area of study you know th this this uh this is very uh, you know this is important too and especially now when we talk about uh you know, uh, with what's going on with the pandemic, if it's still going on, being able to analyze scientific uh, information because there's a lot of conflicting studies out there and you want to get the right one. Okay, instruction. So we've been talking about critical thinking. And now let's look at it from an instructional standpoint, right? Again, educators should foster critical thinking in students. And we're going to look at intellectual skepticism, Bloom's taxonomy, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, instruction for critical thinking. Educators have a duty to foster critical thinking in their students. In the age of the internet, mis in, excuse me, in the age of internet misinformation, teachers should instill a high degree of intellectual skepsis skepticism in their students. You have to tell students not to believe everything they hear. Learners must constantly question the, le the legitimacy of information. Have students evaluate quote fake news okay and that's from you know both sides can call the fake news okay when building lesson objectives or creating classroom activities use bloom's taxonomy to ensure higher order thinking skills are integrated okay learners should be assessed and evaluated on their ability to master content through questions based on increasing degrees of cognitive rigor so a uh, bloom's taxonomy um you know you have the lower levels which is just knowledge, and you work your way up to synthesis and application. So you don't want students just to, to memorize facts. You want them to, to, to be able to, you know, like I said, apply, create, evaluate information. This is what critical thinking is, those higher levels of Bloom's taxonomy. And when you create your lesson objectives, you kind of want to, you know, you don't want to just have a lesson objective where, hey, students learn, uh, stu or, you know, 75% of students will memorize the first five elements on the periodic table. That's not going to really help them you know that memorization maybe students can you know uh you know calculate the the mass based on the neutron and poach you know something like that so <coughs> learners should assess uh, as i mentioned earlier, they have to assess their ability learners should be assessed on 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 their ability to master content through degrees of cognitive rigor so and also when you're testing students so you don't want to just test memorization you want to test their ability to apply because you're trying to develop critical thinking in your students right you're not just you're, you're, you you know you're not just hoping that they can memorize something so you know don't give them the easy questions on on the test make it a little bit difficult right if if you're serious about getting your students to critically think you have to provide critical thinking questions you have to use you know uh lesson objectives with uh higher levels of bloom's taxonomy all right and here's a video that i have of uh, bloom's one of my first videos one of my favorite videos here um really uh that you know uh, does a good job of sort of exp explaining it um, i'll uh, i'll provide the link to this one as well okay and again we're on instruction right so argument analysis tasks are one type of lesson uh, rooted in higher order cognitive rigor argument analysis lessons align with critical thinking uh, development and helps build intellectual skepticism again intellectual skepticism don't just believe everything you hear right and we said higher order cognitive rigor, argument analysis. You know, the debate and, and, and the exchange of ideas and the arguing of ideas is uh, very important. 
having classroom, uh, having classroom, I've got to edit that, having classroom debates is one way to foster critical thinking in students. As an added bonus, it also builds teamwork and oral presentation skills. Another lesson is to have students come up with their own ideas as an invention. Okay, that's synthesis. You know, students, uh, next students create that invention, and lastly, they market that invention to the classroom. This is a common, um, it's like a common lesson they use in like those gifted and talented classrooms. Uh, the invention creation and things like that. Because, you know, that's what it's for, right? Critical thinking. I think pair share is a good one, one of my favorites. Uh, I still use that today. Uh, think pair share is simultaneously an assessment and an activity where students can argue and debate. Students compare, contrast, make judgments on what's correct. And this is an easy way to, to sort of get critical thinking integrated into the classroom. Teachers may have learners analyze or create their own political cartoons. That's great for students that love to draw. Students have to either uh, draw meaning or inject meaning into the cartoons. Uh, creative educators find ways to incorporate riddles into the course curriculum. Some examples. Uh, think, pair, share, riddles, inventions. We've mentioned uh, qu quite a few. Gap fill-ins, another one. Uh, debates. Uh, one great example in, cu in curriculum is integrating riddles and uh, brain teasers into, into teaching poetry. Uh, gap fill-ins may be the best, uh, the best known lesson focused on critical thinking, and it's recommended. And students simply fill in, uh, students simply fill in the steps taken to arrive at a solution. Uh, they must also provide evidence, and that's for the, the gap fill-in. And you could find that in a number of different classes. And uh, riddles are, are fun. Riddles and brain teasers, too. That's actually, you know, those brain teasers are fun just to sort of fill in the time, too, every once in a while. If you got some downtime and, and students aren't doing anything, throw in some brain teasers. Development, right? <coughs> Students can develop critical thinking in several different ways. So follow the evidence by being inquisitive and using metacognitive strategies, metacognition. All right. So help students develop critical thinking by teaching them to follow the evidence. To continue to push and follow the evidence requires grit and perseverance on behalf of the student. This aligns with the idea of the, quote, growth mindset classroom, which has become very popular. The growth mindset is, uh, is needed to follow the evidence. Uh, the growth mindset is, is needed to follow the evidence when students are determined in their epistemic beliefs. Okay, Remember, they have to believe they can do it. If they have that growth mindset, that grit, that perseverance, then you know, they're going to be able to, to solve you know, these problems. That, that's a big part of critical thinking is the effort and being able to believe in yourself. Learners should also be encouraged to ask many questions as they come to their as uh, as many questions as come to their minds, right? So the more inquisitive in nature the students are, the better. Question everything, right? Question, question. Don't just believe. The better critical thinkers they will become in the future, the more inquisitive they are. Okay. Question is, you know, as teachers, we always love questions. And lastly, the development of metacognitive learning strategies. Is essential, is essential to critical thinking. Metacognition will help students understand how they learn and how to apply that knowledge. Okay, they have to understand themselves. They have to know themselves and know how they're thinking about approaching a problem. It's really like stepping back and analyzing your own strategies. That's what metacognition is. How, how am I tackling this, this, uh, you know, this riddle? Am, am I going about it the right way and evaluating yourself? It will help them develop confidence in their abilities to successfully th think through problems. And that confidence is actually likely to help them become more, more successful in solving problems. So here's a nice little, uh, here's a, a nice little infographic of, of everything we've covered in this uh, presentation. Now, this uh, infographic here is part of, the, of an older video, um, very brief, and uh, you can take a look at it here. And, um, you know... This is a, uh, a presentation I sell, um, but uh, you know you get to see it for free now. And I want to say, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for joining me. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna, you know, keep this up here, and we'll keep developing them and becoming better, better educators. Uh, thank you very much, and you know, I'll see you at the at the next one.